Welcome back to The Boxing Show. Katie Taylor is joining us from American Training Camp. Matt Macklin is also on hand with us this afternoon. I don't know where you are, Matt. I think you're in Birmingham, aren't you? Yeah, I'm in Birmingham. Sunny Birmingham. <laughs> it is sunny Birmingham today. Uh, Katie, we all know you as the nicest, nicest person outside the ring. But as soon as you step foot in the ring, you become an absolute demon. Where, where does that switch happen for you? Um, I don't really feel like I need to, to flick any sort of a switch. I think um, a lot of people can see quietness as a weakness, but I think there's great strength and quietness, actually. And, uh, you know, any time I step into the ring, I, um, I, I will do whatever it takes to actually win the fight. Um, but I am a, and actually a quiet person outside the ring. I, I, I am the type of person that just, just does my talking. And, um, so, yeah. But what are you thinking for your ring? What goes through your mind? Um, I'm, I'm just pretty much focusing on what I have to do in the fight. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about the hard work and the sacrifice I think I made uh, um, throughout the last few months. And um, and sometimes during the ring walk, I'm thinking about uh, what what music is actually going to be played because I never really I never really make that decision <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> of the, the ring walk music. So I'm thinking uh, there has been times where I, I'm in the tunnel to walk out and I'm, I'm actually thinking, gosh, I wonder what song is going to be played here tonight. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Have you ever walked out and been surprised thinking I had no idea about this? Yeah, yeah, but that's happened plenty of times actually. <laughs> but they've all been great songs, thankfully, and um, their songs have obviously gotten the crowd going, so I was happy enough with the decisions. <laughs> Do you ever lose your temper away from the ring? Um, I can't really remember. I mean, I, I'm sure I have at some stage, but I would be a very calm and composed uh, person uh, for the most part outside the ring. But there's definitely been times where I've been annoyed by certain things or been annoyed um, by what people have said or whatever. But um, for the most part, I am a calm and composed person. And I'd probably be more of, a, of an impatient person at times. And especially during fight week, I can even be seen as very intolerance or whatever but i am just focused on the fight during fight weekend it's a very very intense time of course matt i'm sure that's something you can relate to oh absolutely i was uh yeah. i was not a nice person the week of a fight yeah. i was hungry <laughs> i was tired <laughs> you know you have the pressure about making weight you, you the game plan everything if there's a few injuries or niggles it's, it's playing on your mind mm. so yeah i think i think all fighters can be a little bit edgy it's probably the right word yeah. fight week but uh i can't imagine you being too uh too difficult katie you're such a, a mild-mannered meek kind of yeah. nice person I, I, I find that hard to believe that you'd be kind of snappy oh, yeah i definitely don't like being around too many people during fight week and um i can definitely be a small bit impatient during during that week as well especially with fight week is obviously such a busy week with press conferences and public workouts and you obviously have the, the pressure of actually performing on, on the fight night as well. And like I said, making weight is never easy. So it, it definitely is um, an intense time, as I said. And, and my family are, have, uh, have always said that they walk around eggshells around me during fight week. They, they don't like who I am during fight week. But um, I think, that, I think it's, it's, it, you know, it's the same for every single boxer, isn't it? <laughs> With everything Absolutely. you've achieved, Katie... Yeah. How do you stay motivated and what is your motivation? Because I'm guessing you're not really interested in fame or the money side of things. So what is your motivation? I think it's all about legacy for me. I want to leave a great legacy and I want to be involved in the biggest fights possible. And, um, you know, you look at the, the great eras of boxing, like the Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, Roberto Duran. Um, Marvin Hacker and Tommy Hearns, they all fight each other in, in their prime and those fights are going to be remembered throughout every single generation because of that. And um, even like Muhammad Ali, you know, in a 19-month period, he fought the likes of Joe Frazier, Ken Norton and George Foreman. These, these are legendary fights and, um, and because of that, these guys are going down as, as legends in the sport and idols in the sport and, and that's the sort of legacy that I want to leave. We're just seeing on pictures now, Katie, your brilliant, superb victory over Eva Valstrom. That was yeah. at the Garden in New York. How yeah. do you reflect on that? Uh, yeah, I think it was a great performance. He was obviously uh, coming as a flight on beaten at the time as well. Um, and um, to, that was my first fight, I think, at Madison Square Garden. It was uh, one, one amazing experience, just 
to find such an iconic stadium and um, yeah, it was, it was such a special night for me. You spoke about your legacy there, Katie. Mm. What's your target? Have you got names? Have you got a list of names of people that you want to fight to achieve that? Yeah, I mean, there's obviously, uh, I, I, I'm obviously fighting Amanda Serrano next, I hope. Um, there's been talks of me fighting uh, Cecilia Bracus and obviously they're, they're, they're pursuing rematches very, very important to them as well. So I, I'd be happy uh, to fight uh, those three big names next, Amanda Serrano, pursuing and Cecilia Bracus. They, they're huge fights. And as I said, I want to be involved in the biggest fights possible. And then these are fights that we're, we're all still in our prime, really. Um, and that's what makes the, these mega fights so special. You mentioned there the Pursuing rematch, and that was uh, back in June last year in New York. Is that something you feel like you just need to put to bed? I mean, you won, but it was in sort of controversial mm. fashion. Is that yeah. something that you really want to sort of put to one side once and for all? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, the Pursuing uh, rematch is, is very, very important. Obviously, a lot of people had her winning the fight, so I definitely need to put that to bed. And um, and I think the next time I do fight, I'll, I'll definitely be... Um, I'll just put on a, a, a better performance. It was a, it was a particularly bad performance, I think, that I, during that night. But thankfully, I, I dug deep and was able to get the win in a very, very close fight. And you're right, it could have definitely went either way. I'm so I'm so grateful that it, it did go my way on, on that night. So I'm looking forward to that rematch and I'm looking forward to putting on a dominating performance. Matt, Katie's list that she just mentioned there, it is quite a list. If she were to beat all of those names, would that put her as an all-time best, do you think? Well, I think she's already put herself in the, in that conversation. You know, even the, uh, women's boxing being in the Olympic Games, she was probably, her abilities and her achievements and her fame in Ireland was, you know, and in women's boxing was probably the single most important factor in getting women's boxing into the Olympics. It certainly played a big part in it and you know what she's done 15 and 0 now as a professional undisputed lightweight champion stepped up and won a, a world title in a second weight division I mean she's already cemented a certain legacy but I suppose for Katie who's you know just keeps setting new goals and new bars you know I suppose the uh, sky's the limit and uh, but I think Brackhouse uh, Serrano you know a rematch we pursue yeah I think that really just absolutely cements her her place in history, you know, maybe the best woman fighter there has ever been. I, I certainly think so. And uh, it just makes, I just wonder actually, you know, even seeing some of the clips earlier when we were introducing her and I just thought, you know, I've got goosebumps and I just wonder where, you know, having, you know, I think, you know, 180 or 80 odd, was it, amateur fights, you know, yeah. 15 and on as a professional, two weight world champion, undisputed down at lightweight, where... What's the what are the goals now? What does keep you motivated? Do you just keep going as long as you can keep performing as much as you are still? I mean, are you still in love with the sport as much as you always have been? Or, or yeah. where, where, you know, what what kind of lights that fire now? Yeah, I definitely am still um, still love the sport as much uh, as I, I ever have really. I'm still so passionate about the sport and the day that I fall out in love with the sport is the day I know that I have to walk away from the sport but I still absolutely love it and I, I love my job. I love uh, waking up every day and, and actually uh, putting the work in um, even though there, there definitely are times when I'm not in the mood for training but um, I think that's that's normal but I do absolutely love this job and just like I said, I know that money and fame, they all pass away but I want to leave a great legacy behind me. I want to make history in this sport and I want to inspire the next generation and um, just break down those barriers, I guess. And um, I want to keep on winning. I want to um, uh, just continue to improve, really. And um, there are a lot of things that I can improve on, which is a great, which is a great thing about it as well. And I don't think people have seen the best of me yet. Katie, do you think about life after boxing? And what does that look like to you? Have you got a goal? Have you got something that you feel like you'll be content to walk away? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, um, when it is time for me to walk away from sport, um, I don't think I'll be the type of person to, to be making these comebacks um, or anything like that or to come out of retirement. But right now, I, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do when I, re when I retire from the sport. I, I think um, there will be plenty of opportunities there for me, I hope. Um, but it's not something that I, ha that I have thought about too much because I'm just in the middle of my career right now and I'm not planning on, on retiring any anytime soon. But... I do hope when it is time for me to retire, that there will be plenty of opportunities. Well, it's good to hear you're not planning to retire anytime soon. Katie, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much yeah. for speaking to us Thanks, today. Anna.